Hi, my name is Steve Tegler. I'm a Senior Director of Systems Engineering in VMware's Cloud Native Apps Business Unit. And this Lightboard session is all about developer abstractions. And notice I've got uh, developer in quotes. You know, that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people, but fundamentally I'm talking about someone that checks in code and creates software. It could be anything from the actual application that may be running um, to an internal IT service that needs to be created to service those application developers. But as you can see, I've got four different types of developer abstractions here. First one is infrastructure as a service. Second one would be the Docker API. Third is Kubernetes. And fourth is Cloud Foundry. And um, you know, in IT, sometimes we find a need for all four of these, uh, potentially. Um, and I want to talk about the difference between each one of these and, uh, and really the level of effort required for the end application owner uh, to deploy their app. So if we take a look at infrastructure as a service, um, the big thing here is that you know, we start with the app. That app needs to be installed um, on top of some sort of virtual machine uh, image of some sort. So with VMware, of course, that's an OVA or OVF. Uh, some of the public cloud providers have AMIs and so forth. Uh, but fundamentally, I got an application that needs to be installed on a base level VM. I normally require something like configuration management to do that activity. So not only is the configuration management going to install the app, but the configuration management is also going to prep that operating system, load all the tools and the libraries and software that you may need. And then finally, I'm going to orchestrate this entire stack with something called infrastructure as code. So that's going to be require me to go use what we call infrastructure primitives. So um, a, a virtual machine, a network, I have to define maybe subnet masks uh, and IP addresses, security firewall rules and those types of things. Basically infrastructure primitives um, and then I deploy it to an IS. So VMware has a solution in this case, if this is, if this is what you need. Um, we've actually got two. We've got VMware Integrated OpenStack and vRealize Automation today um, that can help out with that. So the second piece, um, so we'll draw a line here because infrastructure is, is kind of the way um, uh, most folks have been doing it for uh, you know, last uh, 10 years or so. And what we're moving into is uh, these three technologies, which are more container-based technologies. So I want to kind of contrast uh, the difference here. And so I start off with the same application. And what I do with this application then is I actually want to um, build a container with it. So I'm going to be responsible for taking that application and I'm going to build the container. Okay. Once I built that container, um, then what I need to do is I need to architect, um, let's just call them service dependencies. So if I need access to data, if I need to present that container a certain way out of the host or so forth, I need to basically architect the service dependencies there. Then the final step, because I'm just interacting with a Docker API, which is, you know, think of it as running uh, an individual container, so to speak, um, I'm going to need to basically uh, orchestrate the running of the container or containers. Now, normally when someone's interacting with a Docker API, what we've seen is, you know, they'll use something like a CI CD system that, you know, is kind of a, a nice flow and I can go out to the Docker API and run it. Um, the reality is, oh, and sorry, and so VMware's technology in, this, in the case of, of uh, a Docker, a Docker, providing a Docker API, is something called vSphere Integrated Containers. Now, Vic is an interesting technology, which you can see in a different light board. Um, but fundamentally, the service or the demarcation between the teams is the Docker uh, API. Okay? So what we do see, though, in the data center is a, is a need to go uh, from just dealing with um, uh, the Docker API. We actually want to orchestrate and we want to manage multiple containers at a time because really that's what makes up the entire application. You may have a couple of web servers, a load balancer, and uh, a database, and I need to orchestrate all those things together. So that's where something like Kubernetes comes into play. Um, and so the difference here is that I've got my app. I am going to build the container. Here, I still have that same process. Um, I'm going to architect some dependencies. And Kubernetes gives me a method to do this. So it has constructs that I can use to basically define how this app is going to be stitched together. Once that's done, though, then I can pass that directly to the Kubernetes API. And the Kubernetes cluster will be responsible for running this application for me. 
Okay, and so the solution there from uh, VMware and Pivotal is something called PKS. Okay, now on to the uh, final uh, solution here, which is Cloud Foundry. So Cloud Foundry um, is even more simple. So in this case, I have an application, I have an application artifact. Think of it like a jar file or whatnot. All I have to do with Cloud Foundry is deploy that application or uh, um, basically deploy it into Cloud Foundry and Cloud Foundry will take care of building the containers. It knows a lot of the dependencies, will help scale it and so on and so forth. So it, it and, and that product, so to speak, would be something called uh, Pivotal Application service. Now these are all great. So these are all the different um, VMware uh, functions here that, that help with these different developer abstractions. But the thing is here, um, these all need to run somewhere. right? If you take uh, PKS in particular, there's a load balancer defined up here. Eventually that needs to run on some sort of load balancer, load balancer technology. So what we stick underneath all of this is the software defined data center, okay, which we are all familiar with. And again, this, so this is like vSphere, this is NSX, and this is vSAN. And the idea is that with each one of these technologies here, I can take and I can map the native, uh, call it language, or the native primitives in Kubernetes, like load balancer and security policy and whatnot, and I can map those down into the software-defined data center very easily. Um, same thing with Vic. It can run and it can use some of the native constructs in the SDC. Of course, these two IaaS platforms, they do the same. So we're literally just changing the consumption model of the software-defined data center. And so why do I want to do this? What's so great about leveraging the software-defined data center? Well, the big thing here is that I get to use my existing operations. And so the existing operations can mean a bunch of different things. It can mean um, any, anything from existing technology, so think vRealize operations, log insight, um, those types of things. It could mean those technologies. It could mean human beings. It could mean processes, right? Even just the individual processes. So if I can use the same processes and the same tools, but just provide a different way to consume, there's huge what we'll call um, economies of scale, meaning I don't have to deploy unique infrastructure for each and every one of these things. I can leverage a common infrastructure. Now, whether that's an actual, you know, the same server or the same cluster is to be determined, but at least it's the exact same technology that you can apply the exact same uh, operations to. Now, not only do I have existing operations for the SDDC, a lot of the tools that VMware has are elevating themselves and they'll be able to expand capabilities and monitor a lot of these things as well. So hopefully that gives you a, a good idea of these different, think of them as like IT services that you could provide as, as maybe a v, uh, VMware administrator or architect. These are the different ones and they all map easily on top of, of technology that you already know and already comfortable with. Thanks for watching.